Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our new sound system at the Cote St. Luke. Wow, this is so cool. I can actually hear myself loud and clear. So welcome to the regular council meeting of Monday, December the 12th, 2018. To my right is the Coast City Manager, Jonathan Schechter. We have Councillor Oren Sabag, Councillor Ruth Kovac, Councillor David Torgman running by, coming back up. Councillor Dita Berku, Councillor Stephen Erdely, Councillor Sidney Benizri, Councillor Mitch Kajowski, the City Manager, Tanya Bramovich, and the Associate City Manager, Nadia DeFuria. And uh, we will be starting the meeting with our question period. And our first questioner is Ella Kovac. This question is for Councillor Kovac. Can you please give us an update with the potential for heated sidewalks? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's go. <laughs> On the record, I did not solicit this question. And to answer your question, and when I come back from my vacation, I will start looking into what things might cost and the possibilities. We're not really anywhere near having anything ready yet. We'll start to look into it. And as soon as I know and council know, then you'll know. Well, Ella, I want to thank you for coming. Thank you for coming for question period. You know, uh, you can be very proud of your grandmother because she comes up with ideas, and that's what it's all about. We're going to wait for you to come up with ideas, too, because ideas are what we need, and then we sometimes bring them to reality. It's one person at a time. So thank you for that question. And now we have Mr. Ian Cobden. Yeah. Exactly. Ah, good evening, everyone. So the City of Montreal recently made it public that it's devoting virtually no funds to the Cavendish extension for the next three years. I think it's safe to say that the city's lacking, the City of Montreal is lacking the political will to proceed. And members of council will pardon the skepticism, which I know many other citizens share with me when we hear about incessant studies and discussions and meetings and are left with the feeling that nothing's going to happen in our lifetimes. We've heard it all before, traffic getting in and out of Cote St. Luke's only going to get worse. We've got the Westbury project, we've got the Carbon Leo project, and it really raises two issues. One, the more difficult it is to get in and out of Cote St. Luke, the less likely we are to attract the young families that we're trying to attract into the community. Secondly, in the event of a civil emergency, the increased congestion along the carry without any viable egress is going to create an extremely dangerous situation for residents of Cote St. Luke. So my question to the mayor and to the members of council is with the apparent unwillingness of the city of Montreal to make the Cavendish extension or any, in any way, shape or form a reality in the near future, what concrete steps are being taken to ensure the safety and security of the citizens of Cote St. Luke? Well, I do have a meeting that with Benoit Doré, the executive committee chair, and CP Rail on December 19th, dealing with Cavendish extension, among other things. I have a meeting called by um, Councillor Codwell, Eric Codwell from the City of Montreal, concerning Cavendish extension with me and all the other borough mayors and mayors in the area that are affected. But I just want to say that Cavendish extension is not the be-all and end-all. When the dream was 50 years ago of the Cavendish extension, we did not live in the city that we do today, where our main issue now is crossing to carry a hippodrome site with five, 6,000 units, uh, 70,000 cars going to this new uh, Mount Royal project, a uh, carry square development, all the Westbury projects. And if you look on a map and you see where those projects are, they're right near Cavendish, our Cavendish extension, our dream of a Cavendish extension that will bring all those cars into our city. So we need a lot more. And I know that Councilor Burku and Councilor Sabag are making representations uh, regarding the Royal Mount project and are coming up with innovative ideas that deal with a lot more than cars because we know this administration appreciates that and we realize that there is a need for it. Access to Nemours, a train station at the Cary Square, uh, shuttle buses, a uh, tramway, extending uh, Clan Ranald, improving Vizina and all the other streets. But in terms of a civil emergency, we are thankfully prepared. We live in a nice quiet haven here in Cote St. Luke, but when there is a real emergency, we do have an evacuation 
uh, plan with CP Rail, well, they'll, they'll stop the train and give us four access routes out. We did not use that and call an emergency in during the gas leak because there was no explosion and there was no threat. But if the, we deem a situation to be life-threatening, then we do have four accesses out. So there's the issue of civil emergency and people should not fear or worry. If anything happened in that way, we would have four additional exits out over the, over the railway yards in addition to our Cavendish and, and Westminster. But in terms of the flow of cars, I think our concern really is not as much about getting out of Cote St. Luke as how do you cross the carry? Because even if you can get out of Cote St. Luke, where do you go? Where do you go when you hit the carry? You just sit there. But the idea isn't necessarily to hit the carry. The idea would be to hit the T cam yeah, well, and to bypass the carry and the carry circle. We need to fix, we really need to all work together with the city of Montreal, with developers, and with the transport agencies to fix but this how, problem. But how long have we been hearing this? What, what I'm no. reading is there is no concrete plan because we don't have viable partners. I mean, I think we have to be honest with the community that nothing's going to happen, if at all, for years. I don't, I don't believe nothing's going to happen. It's just educating the politicians and the transport agencies about what exists in this part of the island of Montreal. I don't think they're aware how bad it is to carry certain members I don't of the think transport they, community. Oh, they know. I don't think, care, they, I don't think they care, care for political care. reasons, but we're but, not going to solve that. But they're, they're building the REM. We suggest extending the orange line to the REM. There's a lot of different things that are needed besides the carry. I'm not saying that, besides the Cavendish extension, I'm not saying the Cavendish extension is not a great idea. It's a good idea. It's no longer a great idea because I, my vision of, of uh, a Cavendish extension is one that would have bike paths and a couple of lanes and be like a fleet road, but how much traffic could that really hold with you when you see what's being built right next to it? Now on the second issue, just as a follow-up, I for one am unfamiliar with any of these evacu emergency evacuation plans that you're talking about, and I don't deny that they exist, but I think that the city needs to do a much better job of educating people now as to what to be done. because. For all that you say about the evacuation plan in a civil emergency, I think there's going to be panic. The majority of people won't realize that these accesses exist, and they're all going to be streaming down Cote St. Luke Road and Fleet. Right. Uh, Councillor Sabag would like to answer, and it is a portfolio, so I will let him answer, and then I can add if I have anything to add. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. So the evacuation route and the emergency preparedness plan is something I mentioned that we would be uh, doing as an educational uh, kind of night for the residents. Uh, we're going to be video uh, recording it and putting it online as well. Uh, the, the last time this was done was in 2000, four years ago? 2014. And I mentioned that here in council that we were going to do it again um, after the gas leak happened where a lot of people had some questions around that. Uh, so the plan is there, the emergency preparedness plan is very much active uh, and we'll be disseminating a lot of this information in the next coming weeks. Okay, but I think if we learned any lessons from the whole business with the tempos is that making things available online and presenting it at this venue. It's not uh, going to be this venue. We, it's not going to be like this. It's, it's got to go to the homes of the people. Right. But I it, think it, in I terms think of an evacuation situation, if there was a real emergency, depending on the emergency, you'd be having the police and public safety and security and the fire departments directing people to the appropriate exits. Because if we start the publicizing the Mount Sinai exit, for example, mm -hmm. that could be the wrong one. That might be the one you don't want to be near. So there, in a real emergency, we would be telling people to go to the appropriate exits. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, okay, uh, Councillor Burke would like to add. Oh, okay. Hi. Hey. Uh, Mr. Kopnik, I know that you have a lot of experience in um, the field of um, uh, property development, and um, we have to talk to the developers who all have an interest in um, moving people along the Dakari Corridor, like you're talking about the Westbury, Canvar, uh, Mid-City, uh, so there, there's a lot of developers out there, and as a resident of Cote St. Luke, I would invite you, uh, we can talk offline afterwards, I would invite you to participate with us when we go to the consultations on January 16th 
at 7 o'clock at Ruby Foods. And we will be encouraging our residents to come and uh, support mm -hmm. our, our presentation because uh, we're going to be presenting our transport plan and talking about, you know, issues that, that you've just raised about access and security and getting out of Cote St. Luke and using the carry cord. Terrific. Okay, so keep that date I will. in mind, January 16th, 7 o'clock, and I would definitely uh, encourage you to get in touch with me or I'll get in touch with you, and we'll see if you can assist us in reaching out to the developers who are, all have an interest yes. in promoting a strategic, uh, you know, a proper transport plan right. for the exactly. carry corridor. Yeah, he's a... You're a perfect person. Thank you. Is. Thank you. That's why I'm asking. Him. Excellent. Thank you very much thank for coming. You. So and thank you for the question. No further questions. We're going to move to item number two, uh, approval of the minutes. Councillor Kovac. Seconded so moved. by... Seconded by Councillor Kajafsky on the minutes. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. Now we move to the business arising from the minutes. Departmental reports moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Kujawski. Any discussion? Councillor Torgman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so it's been another great and busy month for our, uh, our great uh, library. Um, I just want to remind everybody out there that there is a homework help program for kids age uh, 8 to 11. Um, and it's out of classroom support for, for kids uh, who need a bit of extra help, whether it's reading, writing, or math assignments. That help is available for, uh, for your kids. Um, there's also a super interesting program called Furry Paws Reading Club. Um, and it's therapy dogs that are brought into the library, uh, and the kids read to the dogs. It's a, it's a less stressful environment for the, the kids, and it's a, uh, it's a great therapy. Um, it's in bilingual, it's, it's, it starts at 3 o'clock, um, and it's for kids age 6 to 10. So I urge you to, uh, to spread the word, let people know that this program is available. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Torchman. Any, Councillor Erdling? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a few items I'd like to report. Uh, first, on the finance side, I want to share the timeline of events regarding the adoption of the budget. Uh, so next Monday, December 17th at 6 p.m., there'll be a presentation on the budget following the, by the adoption. At 6.30, there'll be a notice of motion for the tax rates, and the tax rates themselves will be adopted later that week on Wednesday, uh, December 19th at 6.30. We encourage residents to hopefully come out and see it live, or they can watch it uh, on their computers. Uh, just to continue on that note, uh, the tax bills, assuming everything is adopted, as stated on December 17th and December 19th, the tax bills will go out on January 25th. The first due date uh, for the first installment will be February 27th, and the second installment will be due May 28th. Uh, so again, you'll have more information about that being sent to all homes, but I just wanted to give everyone a, a preview. Uh, a few other items I want to report. Uh, next is about tempos. So to date, uh, 98 tempo permits have been purchased. A reminder to residents who would like to get a tempo, uh, please make sure you do come to City Hall, you get the appropriate permit, uh, and you check with urban planning to make sure you're following the regulations regarding tempos with regard to the proximity to the sidewalk and safety, uh, and so on. And uh, on park notes, in my district I wanted to share, Earl Park, uh, the, the wood chips were updated recently, uh, and next year there'll be an update to one of the pieces of equipment, so it's looking very nice, although it's hard to see right now because of the snow, or a little bit of snow and ice, but it'll, it'll look very beautiful come spring. And in Schwartz Park, uh, very soon the skating rink will be going up. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. And that's all I'd like to report right now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Erdley. Councillor Kajaski, you want to talk also about Kerwin Park, yeah. Council. Uh, oh, go ahead. Okay, so um, for those of you listening online and here, um, this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. at the Aquatic Center, we'll be having our follow-up uh, public consultation for Kerwin Park for the upcoming renovation, uh, which will be next summer. The park will be closed all summer for that renovation. Uh, we had our first public consultation last year. We got some great feedback from the public, which was used to create the initial design or for the, uh, for the professional services to create the initial design for the park. And now, as promised, we're going back to the public to ask for further input to look at that initial design 
and to fine tune to really get the public's feedback and see what they believe is missing, what what they think can be added, obviously within the constraints of the budget. So for all of you online listening and everyone here, I hope you'll come out. Uh, the more people, the more brains we have on it, the better. Um, 7 p.m., Aquatic Centre, this coming Thursday, December 13th. Thank you, Councillor Kudaski. Councillor Sabag. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know we talked about it uh, quite a bit, um, uh, the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting. And, and so in the aftermath of the synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh in October, uh, the local Jewish community institution were understandably on edge. Federation CJA organized a community security briefing on November 5th um, for the leadership of the local synagogues and schools. The local police commander and public security heads, uh, including from Cote St. Luke, were present to discuss, to share, and to help bring augmented sense of security to our local uh, Jewish community. We also had an incredible uh, ceremony uh, for Remembrance Day here at City Hall. Um, and I want to thank the staff that organized that. That was really, really special, uh, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the signing of the armistice. Yeah, it's uh, right here on the front cover. Oh, yeah? OK, good. Um, in terms of uh, action in Cote St. Luke, we've seen a lot of it recently. Um, yesterday, there was a fire on uh, Park Haven in Kildare. I can tell you personally that it was impressed by the uh, and, and thankful for the VCOP's response uh, and call out uh, that was responded to late at night. And speaking of VCOPs, I just want to let you guys know uh, that November is the fourth uh, biggest month in terms of number of patrols from our VCOPs, 758 hours uh, done just in the month of November, and hopefully going strong in December as well. Um, that's it for me. Um, Thank you. Councillor Sabag, anybody else? No. Yes, yes. Councillor Cohen and then Councillor Benizri. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, you just referred to this uh, document. I want to commend. Uh, yep. Uh, I wanted to commend Daryl Levine and his team in public affairs and communications. This is an outstanding piece of work. It in uh, in uh, in, uh, in not, uh, not a lot of pages. It's got a lot of fantastic information. It's a great read and it's the type of magazine that you really can keep, or should keep in the kitchen, you should keep it around the house. There's a lot of very handy numbers there. We'll make sure it's online as well, but uh, it's a really great piece of work. So congratulations, Daryl, and we're very proud to send this out to all our residents. Thank you. Councillor Benizri. I was just pointing uh, Mike Cohen. That's what I was saying. I was oh. pointing Mike Cohen, but just to tell you public works, I think they, you know, like, uh, you know, we had already uh, a first uh, snowstorm, like, uh, uh, two weeks ago, and uh, we're still preparing ourselves, you know, to the, to the winter. So I think we are ready for snow. So <laughs> have a good winter. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Very briefly, Mr. Mayor. That's a good uh, ask. I forgot to mention, um, I'm not sure if any of you had a chance to check out the uh, aquatic meet, the Cotsen Aquatics uh, swim meet this weekend. 1,000. But I wanted to congratulate Parks and Recreation, Cornelia Ziga in particular, for a massively successful event. There must have been, I believe, close to 1,000 people went through the aquatic center this weekend. Uh, I was there at one point on Saturday. There must have been five or 600 people in the building. And I, I lost count. I was going through the results. I, I lost count at 37 first place finishes for Coats and Luke Aquatics. So obviously we've got an absolute top-notch aquatics program. So congratulations to the team, congratulations to Park, Parks and Recreation, and looking forward to the next meet. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so if there's no further reports, we are moved and seconded. All in favor of the department reports? No one opposed? <laughs> Carrie. What's that? The mover and seconder were Ruth and Mitch. And now we move to item number five, Eleanor London Public Library, Councillor Torgman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That the City Council hereby approves the award and, and awards the contract for the purchase and installation of a glass partition for the Eleanor London Cote St. Luke Public Library to LDMA Inc. and authorizes payment of $8,064.70 plus applicable taxes for the aforementioned purchase and installation. That Treasurer Certificate Number TC18-0186 
dated November 21st, 2018, has been issued by the Treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. That the, council, that the City Council approves the borrowing pursuant to a non-interest bearing loan from its working fund for this expenditure. That the City Council shall provide every year out of its general fund a sum sufficient to repay the loan back to its work, working fund. That the term of repayment shall not exceed five years. Moved by Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? Uh, this is to create a, uh, a, a working area, a uh, communal working area uh, for uh, people of all ages uh, in, in a section of the library. So it's a, more of a collaborative working area, um, less of a quiet area, but not a conference room. So I think it's going to be highly used by, um, by multiple uh, patrons, for sure. Yeah, if you walk into the library now and you go straight, instead of going to the circulation desk, you just go straight. It's the area right in front of you. And uh, that will be excellent, particularly for students during exams when they want to have or group projects. Uh, creates another division. So the library remains quiet, yet there's areas for discussion. So moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, and now we move on to item seven, which is human, or no, item six, which is financial services. Councillor Erdely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Cote St. Luke City Council approves the attached list of disbursements for the period of November 1st, 2018 to November 30th, 2018, for a total amount of $3,320,389.31 in Canadian funds, and that treasurer certificate number 18-0198 dated December 3rd, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? Uh, just to mention briefly, no significant purchases. The only one to mention uh, would be an installment for the renovations being done on the Park Haven pool. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, we move to item number seven, Human Resources 7A, Councillor Ben Isri. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be, be resolved that the Cote Saint Luc City Council appoints Enrico Falcon as the driver of motorized vehicles, C, blue collar permanent position, effective November 5th, 2018. That treasurer's certificate number 18 0197, dated December 3rd, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Benizri, seconded by Councillor Torgman. Any discussion? No. Uh, it's uh, 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 the hiring, uh, the appointment of a driver. <coughs> it's a driver for, for public works. For public works, yeah. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. Item 7B is Councillor Erdely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Cote St. Luke City Council approves the appointment of Chelsea Desjardins as a temporary accounting agent, white collar auxiliary position, effective October 29th, 2018, and that treasurer certificate number 18 0195, dated November 30th, 2018, has been issued by the City <coughs> Treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Kajavsky. Any discussion? So just to explain briefly, uh, Chelsea is, uh, has been employing the accounting department and the finance department for the last few years. Uh, she was chosen uh, several months ago as our employee of the month. Uh, is doing a great job. So this is a temporary, I guess, temporary <coughs> promotion uh, while we have another employee who's on maternity leave. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, we move to item 7C, Councillor Erdely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Cote St. Luke City Council approves the appointment of Adam Azurel as a temporary office agent, white collar auxiliary position, effective October 29th, 2018, and that treasurer certificate number 18-0188, dated November 29th, 2018, has been issued by the city treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds that cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Jasky, any discussion? Councilor so just to explain as a follow up to the previous motion, uh, so Chelsea is promoted, has been promoted to replace someone who's on maternity leave. Adam is a former stagiaire uh, who was doing a uh, stage or practicum with the city, is now taking Chelsea's place in her original position. Moved and seconded. All in favor? <coughs> Anyone opposed? 
carried unanimously, and then we move to item D, Councillor Kajawski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Kotzen Luke City Council hereby approve the mandate extension for Dahlia Mohammed, the junior project coordinator, for a fixed term contract effective from September 29, 2018 to December 21, 2018. That treasurer certificate number 18 0189, dated November 29, 2018, has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kajaski, seconded by Councillor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Berku, if you'd like. It's urban planning, urban development. Uh, any discussion? Uh, just very briefly, it's just an extension of, uh, of the contract of Dahlia Mohammed in, uh, in urban, uh, urban planning department. Yeah, she's great, Dahlia. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Carried unanimously. And we move to item E, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council approves the hiring of the white collar auxiliary employee whose name is listed on the document entitled Auxiliary Employees White Collar Hiring, dated November the 27th, 2018. That said employee's term of employment will be as per the conditions of the collective agreement. That the treasurer certificate number 18-0193, dated November the 29th, 2018, has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. And this is for a public skating monitor. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Erdely, who loves skating. Um, any discussion? We said what it was. All in favor? No one's opposed. Carried unanimously. We move to item 7F. Councillor Burku. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, be it resolved that Code Civil Council approves the hiring of Ariel Paradis as temporary documentation and archive technician, white collar auxiliary position, effective November 12, 2018, that the treasurer certificate number 18 0190. Dated November 29th, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Berku, uh, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? No, it's uh, self explanatory. It's for the um, arch archive technician. I, she's already working, she's doing a great job. All in favor? Anyone opposed? No, so carried unanimously. We move to item G, Councillor Benizri. Seven thank you. Yeah. I have a, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be resolved that the Côte saint City Council approves the hiring of Jean Laneville as a mechanic permanent blue collar position, effective November 19, 2018. That treasurer's certificate number 18-0194, dated November 29, 2018, has been issued by the treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Benizri, seconded by Councillor Kajaf, Cass Erdely. Any discussion? I would. All in favor? No, it's, uh, no, it's for uh, hiring, hiring of a mechanic from no, public works. Yeah. All in favor? All in favor? Carried unanimously. And now we move to H. Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council approves the hiring of Lorendana Pizzucco as an on-call reception, admission, and shop attendant white collar auxiliary position, effective November the 8th, and that the treasurer certificate number 18-0191, dated November the 29th, 2018, has been issued by the city treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expense. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? No, nope. shop attendant for the um, on call reception. On call reception, parks and recreation. Uh, all in favor? No one's opposed. Carried unanimously. We move to number I, 7I, Councillor Berku. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Erica. Erica. Yeah, the whereas. Uh, when the city council 
Whereas City Council submitted on April 24, 2018, an application entitled The Shared Initiative Senior Health in Real Time Environmental Data, the application to the Smart Cities Challenge, a pan Canadian competition by Infrastructure Canada open to all municipalities. Whereas the city is among the finalists that a jury recommended to the Minister of Infrastructure, and its final proposal made of a series of concrete plans will enable implementation and post implementation. Um, according uh, to the um, Smart City finalist guidelines, whereas the city requires a public engagement coordinator who is responsible for the integration of all the elements required for the final proposal of the Smart Cities Challenge as set out in the guidelines and ensure that all elements of the proposal will be finalized by March 5th, 2019, whereas City Code St. Luke Council would like to award a super uh, munerary management contract in relation to the Infrastructure Canada Smart City Challenge with Erica Botner, whereas the city as a finalist has been awarded a budget of $250,000 that's called the Smart City Budget, which is specifically designated to cover all the expenses and salaries incurred in order to prepare the proposal for the Smart City Challenge. Be it resolved that the Coates and Luke Council approves the hiring of Erica Botner as a public engagement coordinator for the Smart Cities Challenge into a contract management position. The fixed term contract is effective from October 19th, 2018 to March 8th, 2019, and her salary will be paid for with the awarded amount from the Smart City budget. That the treasurer's certificate has been issued attesting the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Kujawski. Any discussion? Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that in fact we, uh, we're one of the finalists. We are in the category of um, cities bet uh, between the size of uh, 30,000 to 500,000. And uh, we're in the top 10 in that category. Two of those uh, 10 finalists will, are eligible to win $10 million. Our project is going very well. You can uh, follow us um, online. We just uh, posted another video um, updating uh, the, the public as to what we're doing. We're at the pilot stage now where we're going to be implementing some um, smart home devices into seniors' homes. And uh, Erica has been extremely instrumental in working with uh, Tanya Bramovich, our city manager, and with the whole Smart Cities team um, in um, working on the on this pilot and also doing the public engagement. We had a, a few very important sessions with the public. So as a public engagement uh, coordinator, I think she's, she's doing a great job and we look forward to continuing to work with her going forward. Thank you. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously and we move on to the next item which is item 7J. Councillor Erdely. Thank you, Mr. Baron. Oh. <coughs> Be it resolved that Cote St. Luke City Council approves the status and title change of Miriam Nune El Giris from payroll and benefits supervisor contract management position to payroll manager permanent management position effective October 1st, 2018. That treasurer certificate number 18 0192, dated November 29th, 2018, has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? So just to mention, uh, Miriam or Mary has been with the city uh, for about a year now. She's done a great job and uh, this is basically to take her from being a temporary to a permanent position, permanent member of our management team. Moved and seconded, all in favor? Carried unanimously, we move to item eight. Legal Department, 8A, Councillor Kovac. Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Councillor Mitch Kajavsky is and shall be named Acting Mayor or the, of the City of Cote St. Luke effective January the 1st, 2019, up to and until March the 31st, 2019 inclusively, and further that the aforementioned Councillor Kajavsky shall have and may exercise the powers of the Mayor when the said Mayor is absent or unable to perform the duties of his office. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? I, I won't let it go to my head. All I can say <laughs> is his uh, portfolio is a dramatic society, and his name's already Mitch, so that should be easy. Passing no the problem. Mitch to Mitch. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Carried unanimously. And congratulations, 
Mr. Pro Acting Mayor. Uh, 8B, Councillor Sabag. 8B. B. 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 The following members of council deposited their statement of uh, pecuniary interest at tonight's <laughs> council meeting. Mitchell Brownstein, Dita Burkew, Mike Cohen, Stephen Early, Ruth Kovac, David Torjman, Mitch Kujafti, Kujafsky, Sydney Benizri, and Oren Seabag, whereas in accordance with the stipulation of an act respecting elections and referendum, referendums in municipality, each member of a municipal council mu must make a written financial statement declaration of his, her interest within 60 days of her, his election or anniversary thereof. Be it resolved that the council of the city of Cote St. Luke officially declare that such statement of pecuniary interests have been received from Mayor Brownstein, Councillor Dita Burku, Councillor Mike Cohen, Councillor Stephen Early, Councillor Ruth Kovac, Councillor David Torjman, Councillor Mitch Kujavsky, Councillor uh, Sydney Benizri and Councillor Oren Seabag and instructs the city clerk to deposit um, same in the archives of the city as well as uh, to send the official list of those who have uh, filed uh, their declaration to the Minister of Municipal Affairs of Land Occupancy. Okay, moved by Councillor Sabag, seconded by? Councillor Cohen. Councillor Cohen, any discussion? All in favor? Nope. Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move to item 8C. 8C is Councillor Sabag. Go ahead. Moved by Councillor Sabag, seconded by Councillor Erdely. Any discussion? Yeah. So this is essentially to uh, change the um, speed limit on McDonald. No. Is not it? This is the correction. Oh, sorry. The tempo. I apologize. Tempo. Tempo bylaw. Is this the tempo? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I apologize. I thought this was the. Co I apologize. You're right. Okay, There's sorry, no that problem. was the next yeah, one. Well explained, thank you, Maitre. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Sabag, seconded by Councillor Erdely. Uh, all in favor of the clerical change? Yeah, clerical. We're, thank you, so it's carried unanimously and it's now corrected. And now we move to item D, Maitre Schechter. Thank you, Maitre Schechter. And now we move on to the next item, which is item E, Councillor Burku. So, this is, um, this is uh, <coughs> Whereas Carmichael has Carmichael Inc. has sent the City Code St. Luke invoices in the amount of $19,090.16, whereas the City wishes now to now pay out the invoices in question, whereas the City held back the payment of these invoices due to ongoing litigation 
with its chemical maintenance contractor, whereas it is both Carmichael Limited and the City of Cote St. Luke wish to work together in good faith. Be it resolved, the City of Cote St. Luke hereby authorizes the release of the $19,090.16 in monies owed to Carmichael pursuant to invoice number MT-1578557 and MT-1580015 and MT-1585063 for services rendered and approved. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Erdely. Any discussion? So these were monies that we were holding back due to um, some litigation that we were having with regard to our HVAC system. And um, now it's clear that um, the company in question is not uh, liable or is go not going to be um, called into the litigation. So we're, we're paying the invoices. And um, that's it. Moved and seconded. All in favor? No one opposed. Carried unanimously. We go to item 8F. Okay. Councillor Burku. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to present this motion. Okay. I'm not going to read the entire thing. I, I, I don't know if it's at the back of the room, but um, I'm just going to read the, the preamble and then get to the final. So whereas Canada has the opportunity to become a waste reduction leader and has led the development of new global treaty of a new global treaty to combat plastic pollution, the Global Plastics Charter, discussed at the G7 meeting hosted by Canada in Charlevoix on June 8th and 9th, 2018. Whereas the G7 countries have agreed to a Global Plastics Charter that commits Canada to developing more resource efficient and sustainable approaches to the management of plastics that involves industry, academia, government, and citizens. And I would say cities as well. So be it resolved, I just lost my place, sorry, that similar to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, the Cote St. Luke Council calls on the Government of Canada to develop a national strategy that seeks to eliminate plastic pollution with regulations and policies. Now there's a whole list uh, of uh, regulations and policies. There's a list of 12. I'm not going to read them all, but just uh, in summary, it's to eliminate the use of problematic products, packaging that pollute our environment, such as the industrial use of microplastics, including but not limited to microbeads, needles, fibrous mi microplastics, fragments, establishing consistent national definitions, performance standards, and measurement protocols for achieving targets, developing a, a national single-use plastics reduction and recycling performance standard, supporting commodity markets that incentivize the use of secondary materials over virgin materials, and setting national plastic reduction and recovery targets that are measurable and encourage the transition to a circular economy. And finally, creating incentives for waste management systems and infrastructure that increase the recovery, reuse, recycling, and composting of products and packaging. Thank you, Councillor Berku. Seconded by Councillor Erdling. Any further yes. discussion? I, want, I would like to speak to this. Go ahead. We are the level of government that picks up the garbage. Okay? I mean, that's basically what we do. That's, that's our core are. business, part of our core business. And, you know, the manufacturing sector is producing all this waste. Consumers are just buying and transferring it down the line. And the taxpayers at the level of the municipal government uh, are paying in order to collect and then sort and then dispose. And eventually, a lot of this stuff ends up not being properly managed. And it ends up in the oceans. And we're seeing it in a dramatic increase all over the world. So I think that we have a responsibility. We're trying to implement programs in our city that uh, encourage people to reduce, reuse, and recycle. But um, we also need a stronger commitment from the federal government to incentivize uh, manufacturers and consumers to reduce the use of plastic in their in the, you know, in packaging and in their consumer habits. So that's why we, we're adopting this resolution and I hope that we can 
you know, ramp up our programs, because right now recycling is, 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 is difficult because the Chinese market has collapsed for our recyclable materials. So we're going to have to find other solutions. And one thing I mentioned to council before I came out here is there's a young man in Malaysia who's using seaweed to produce packaging that replicates, you know, sort of this, the fine plastic materials that are used to, to package uh, foods or soaps or things like that. So. And you can have sushi after. And you can have sushi after, right. <laughs> edible, edible packaging. No. All right. So um, that's why we are adopting this resolution. We hope that all, and as I mentioned, it's coming from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, which is a federation of all municipalities across Canada. And uh, we hope that uh, we're going to get some, uh, some um, <coughs> resonance um, that's going to, that it's going to have an impact on the federal government in order to implement these, these programs. Thank Moved you. by Councillor Berkeley, seconded by Councillor Erdley. Any Second. further discussion? Councillor Erdley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just wanted to mention briefly, Coat Sandlook has been very successful over the last few years. We've tripled the amount of waste that is being diverted and we've reduced the amount of waste going to landfill by 33 percent. However, uh, the reality is there's still too much going to landfill. Uh, the problem, part of the problem, as Councillor Berku mentioned, uh, in the past the, there was a huge demand for the recycling. Uh, more than 50 percent of the recycling from North America went to China. And in the last few years, China has severely cut back the amount of material they are taking, uh, which means that a lot of it is sitting in recycling plants, and some of it is ultimately ending up in garbage, in landfill. Uh, and if we can and reduce, in and in the oceans as well, and if we can find a way to reduce the packaging, uh, that will help significantly with the amount of waste. And I can tell you, you know, we all see it, especially when it comes time to the holidays, uh, when gifts are purchased, you can see the amount of packaging that comes with every item that is being bought and sold. Uh, so definitely whatever we hope the federal government will do, it will help lessen the load on cities, uh, municipalities like Cote St. Luke and others throughout the country. Uh -huh. Thank you. Councilor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I fully support this. Normally at the end of a, a resolution like this, we would be sending it to our right. um, member of parliament and right. I mean, um, certainly our M&A as well right. and sharing it with other municipalities, encouraging to do that. Let me go out there and put out another idea and it's not mine. Who did that? Mm, there are many cities that use waste and when they can't dispose of it recyclable, they actually incinerate it but yeah. use the heat from that to generate to heat their buildings if not sidewalks but these are things that are out there already we're not reinventing the wheel this is something that it's out there and we're not doing it if I, yes if i may add uh, what the what the city of montreal does actually they with the the miron quarry the former yeah. uh or the centre environnemental saint michel uh, where they no longer actually accept waste, at least not garbage, uh, what they are doing there is they have tapped the methane that is produced yep. by this giant, uh, you know, huge, huge amount, we're talking about millions and millions of tons of garbage. They have capped the methane and they use that methane that is produced uh, to create electricity, uh, to generate electricity. Now, I'm not sure the number of homes, it does create electricity for a certain number of homes in the vicinity of the St. Michel site, uh, but it's still, it's not a significant amount. Uh, in order to reach <coughs> levels, uh, true, you'd have to incinerate, but of course incinerating it would produce other toxins into the environment because by burning plastic there's a lot of nitrous oxides, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, <coughs> organic compounds, volatile organic compounds that would be released, so I don't think that's necessarily the solution, uh, but obviously we have to try to be creative in that front. And for you watching out there, that was your free science lesson. <laughs> So we so have moved. We're going to ask the resolution that we're going to send it to the uh, minister, to the uh, minister of the environment, yes. minister of the environment, our federal MP, our and, uh, and the agglomeration council as well. And the federal, and provincial, and to our local, and to our M and A. Our MP, and our local MA. Moved and seconded, all in favor? Carried unanimously. And now we move to item uh, G, 
Mitra Schechter. So this is a filing of a correction. There was an error in translation. Um, there was a typo actually in one of the numbers of uh, low bylaws. The uh, English version was fine. However, in terms of the use of available surplus um, for a project, uh, it was uh, erroneously produced in the French version, so we corrected the number. Thank you, Mithra Schechter. And now we move on to item H, Councillor Sabag. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, all right. I think I have the right one this time around. Yeah, this is the one for McDonald's. Great. So, um, I'd like to give notice of motion that bylaw 2321-3 to be entitled bylaw 2321-3. Dash three amending bylaw two three two one entitled bylaw respecting speed in the streets in order to modify the speed limit on McDonald Avenue from forty kilometers an hour to thirty kilometers an hour will be presented at a later meeting for adoption. <clears throat> Mayor Brownstein mentioned the object object of the scope of the bylaw two three two one dash three to be entitled bylaw two three two one dash three amending bylaw two three two one entitled bylaw respecting speed in the streets in order to modify the speed limit on McDonald Avenue from 40 to 30 kilometers an hour. And I'm, like to table. And I'm tabling. Set. Yeah. Yep. The table set. The, the draft bylaw, correct. Draft bylaw. Okay. And that's that. So there's no vote on that. No, no but I think it should, it should be explained, explained I, that, absolutely. that right. the purpose is to harmonize with the speed limit on McDonald and on the Montreal side because we don't usually go down to 30 unless there's a park or a school. But we're doing it in order to harmonize because the residents are more than confused when they're driving down the street. One side is 40, one side is 30. <laughs> it's a little well, now confusing. Although I do think that okay. it should be 30. We do have schools in that right. area. Right. No, it's justified, yeah. absolutely. Okay, now we move to item number nine, Parks and Recreation, Councillor Kovac, 9A. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, that the Cote St. Luke City Council hereby uh, exercises the second and third option years under the tendered contract C33-16-20 for the supply of chemical products necessary for maintaining the clarity of the pool and its indoor water in its indoor pools to Aldest, Inc., and this for this period between January the 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2020 for a total amount not to exceed $82,872 plus applicable taxes and that the treasurer certificates will be issued at the relevant times to attest to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Erdely. Any discussion? Okay, so this is just for chemicals that we need for our pools. Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed, carried unanimously. We move to item 9B, Councillor Erdely. This is uh, yeah. liquid chlorine. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council hereby awards a contract pursuant to the UMQ group tender to Lavo Inc. for the purchase of liquid chlorine in bulk for the 2019 and 2020 years for an estimated quantity of 50,000 liters per year for a total estimated amount of $26,500 plus applicable taxes and that treasurer certificate will be issued at relevant time to attest the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion, Councillor Erdely? So first on the, on the price, just to explain, uh, we are paying 26 cents per liter. It's gone up to 27 cents per liter, which is uh, still a very uh, reasonable rate, so an increase roughly of 3.8%. Uh, so what this liquid chlorine is, it's 12% sodium hypochlorite, uh, which is basically the main chemical active ingredient that's used in bleach. It's also the main one that's used to chlorinate pools. And 12% is the standard uh, used to, for pool chlorine. And by joining with the UMQ and their group tender, it's enabled us to be part of the economies of scale along with other UMQ municipalities. That's very informative as well. Science lesson number two. 
So moved and seconded, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move on to the maintenance of our outdoor and indoor pools. Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the City of Cote St. Luke Council hereby awards a contract for the maintenance services of its outdoor and indoor pools for the 2019 year in accordance with the terms of the tender number C22-18-23 to the lowest conforming bidder, namely Piscine PLPS Inc., for a total amount of $37,285 plus applicable taxes, and that the city reserves its rights with respect to the 2020, 21, 22, and 23 option years, and that a treasure certificate will be issued by the Treasurer in January 2019 to attest to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Kajawski. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yep. The contract includes the following, the opening and closing of the outdoor pools, the painting of the surfaces at the tennis club pool and Yitzhak Rabin waiting pool only as needed, technical support visits twice a week including the training of city staff, uh, bacteria testing and the closing of the indoor pools for maintenance once a year and then emergency repairs as needed with uh, estimated labor costs and this represents um, I think it was a 35 percent decrease uh, of from before so I think that we've done very well we had five conforming bids which is really good when we go to tender that we got five bids and they were all conforming excellent yeah moved and seconded all in favor anyone opposed Carried unanimously, we move to item D, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that bylaw 2520, entitled bylaw 2520, creating the fee schedule for culture, sports, and leisure activities for the spring and summer of 2019, be and is hereby adopted. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Kajaski. Any discussion? It just covers the range of fees that will be for the spring session for a maximum of 10 weeks and the summer 2019 season will run for a maximum of eight weeks and the fees and bylaw are recommended, uh, were recommended in, in committee to be adopted. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to item number 10, Public Works. Councillor Benizri. Merci, Monsieur le Maire. Et résolu que le Conseil de la Ville, par la présente, <coughs> par la présente exerce les deux premières années optionnelles du contrat conclu en vertu de l'appel d'offres numéro C-34-17-22 pour l'achat de matériel bitumineux, y compris des enrobés bitumineux à chaud et à froid, des pierres ainsi que la disposition de rebuts reliés octroyés antérieurement à construction des JL incorporés, et ce pour la période entre le 1er janvier 2019 et le 31 décembre 2020, pour un montant total n'excédant pas 100 000 dollars, plus les taxes applicables. Que si la consommation réelle pour toute portion d'année au contrat excède la quantité maximale estimée ci-dessus, l'excédent sera approuvé en conformité avec les procédures d'ordre de changement et le règlement sur la délégation de pouvoir de la ville. Que des certificats du, du trésorier seront émis en début de chaque année du contrat pour attester la disponibilité des fonds pour couvrir les dépenses pour l'année respective. Merci. Proposé par le conseiller Benizri, appuyé par le conseiller Kovac. Est-ce qu'il y a des discussions Non This is for hot uh, asphalt. Hot asphalt. Yeah. And, hot and, and cold. cold asphalt. Sorry, hot and cold. We, we, we need it all. <laughs> okay, moved and seconded. All in favor Anyone, Everyone's in favor Okay, no one's opposed. Carried unanimously. And we move to item 11, purchasing general counsel. Item 11A, Councillor Burku. Councillor Torgeman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that the City Council hereby awards the agreement for a project manager in relations to the Infrastructure Canada Smart City Challenge with Delavanti Software Inc., as represented by Mark Schwicky, pursuant to the contract number K 45 18, with the effective date of September 1, 2018, in the amount of $10,000 per month, not to exceed $100,000 plus applicable taxes, which will be paid for with the awarded amount from the Smart City budget. That the agreement is the attached to form <coughs> an integral part thereof. The City Manager BN is hereby authorized to sign the aforementioned agreement on the City's behalf, 
that the Treasurer's Certificate Number TC-18-0199, dated December 4th, 2018, has been issued by the Treasurer, City Treasurer, attesting to the availability of $40,000 for the 2018 portion of the agreement to cover the above described expenses. That, this, that the Treasurer's Certificate for the remaining amount will be issued in 2019, attesting to the availability of the described expenses. Thank you, Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Kajaski. Any discussion? This is the awarding of a contract for our project manager for our Smart Cities Challenge uh, that's moving along smashingly. Um, <laughs> and very, uh, very happy about the progress uh, and looking forward to uh, winning the $10 million prize. All right, that's the attitude. And he's great. He's doing a great job, uh, Mark Shriki. And again, all these monies are coming out of the Federal money, the federal, federal grant. Two hundred fifty thousand. Moved and seconded. All in favor? <laughs> Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We now go to item B. <coughs> Councillor <coughs> Torgman. Okay. Councillor Kajaski. This is a smart city team. Councillor Burku, Councillor Torgman, and Councillor Kajaski. In terms of the councillors. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council hereby ratifies the consultant agreement for preliminary privacy impact assessment in relation to the Infrastructure Canada Smart Cities Challenge with Amina Corp, as represented by Sharon Polsky, pursuant to contract number K-45-18, dated and signed November 1st, 2018, by the City's General Council in the amount not to exceed $21,743.86, plus applicable taxes which will be paid for with the awarded amount from the Smart City Budget that a treasure certificate will be issued by, issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses for the 2019 year. Moved by Councillor Kajowski, seconded by Councillor Burku. Yes, I just uh, Go ahead. clarification, Mr. The March 15 contract is K45-18, and the Sharon Polson contract is also K45-18. So I think one of them said 15 to one. No. No, she said 15. Okay, 18. So the two different numbers. Are they both 18 or is one 15? 18. Clerical well, error that should be. Is, He's going to check so we can have it right. Because it both says. Yeah. They're both 45 18, so. Or is 45 18, is that the Smart City Infrastructure Program? Is that what it is? Is that the GL code? Maybe it's for everything. It's not the GL code. It's a number of by our purchasing department, but I just want to verify it's not for a purchasing department. It might be for everything. Is that a general number for all the smart cities contracts, or is it for the city contracts? It's a general number for all the smart cities contracts. Is that the number for all the smart cities contracts? Is that the number for all the smart You could check that up, but yeah. it might be the number that's for everything to do with smart cities. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Mike, Councilor Cohen. Carried unanimously. And now we move on to item C, which is Councilor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Cote St. Luke City Council hereby approves the termination of a lease agreement between the city and 926. 2-3297 Quebec Inc. as attached herewith and that council hereby approves the lease with a three-year term commencing January the 1st, 2019 with three option years between the city and 9222-4237 Quebec Inc. and that the lease is attached to form an integral part hereof and that the city's general council being is hereby authorized to sign the aforementioned termination of the lease agreement and the new lease on the city's behalf. Um, Okay, we'll wait for the seconder and I'll explain it. Seconded by, moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? Councillor Kovac? Yes, Mr. Mayor. What we've done is uh, the Aqua Cafe at the 
at the Aquatic Center. We've terminated the lease with the current owner and signed a new lease with a new owner. And it will be for a three-year term with three option years. There is a security deposit. He has um, adequate insurance, and he will be putting in capital investments in the amount of $10,500. So I fully support this new, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll have excellent service and more products to offer the public. Thank you, Councillor Kovac. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? You're in favor? Anyone's in favor? Okay, carried unanimously. And now we move on to item 12, which is urban development. Councillor Burku, 12.1A. We need pictures. Yeah. Okay, so 12.1A. I thought the developer was calling. The, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's right there. All right, so 12.1A. Be it resolved that the city planning and architectural inter integration programs received November 5, 2018, showing elevations of a two-story rear extension and a one-story side extension to an existing two-story detached single-family dwelling on lot 1561730 at 6865 Bailey and prepared by Jolie Bijan Architects for the Planning Advisory Committee meeting of November 28, 2018 be approved according to the provisions of Chapter 14 of Bylaw 2217 of the City of Cote St. Luke. Moved by Councillor Burku, seconded by Councillor Torgman. Any discussion? Okay, so um, I don't know if you can see it in the plan. That's the, uh, yeah, that's, the, that's the existing. And then I think there's a plan of the proposed. So basically it's an elevation showing the addition of a two-story rear extension and a one-story side extension uh, for the garage of uh, this uh, very small house on, on Bailey uh, near um, Westbourne. It, it fits right into the, um, into the lot, and there's no need for minor exemptions with regard to the setbacks. So it's, the, the lot is big enough for the extension. So moved and seconded. All in favor? No one's opposed. Carried unanimously. We go to... Item B, okay. 7015 Kildare. So this is for the mikvah on Kildare. Be it resolved that site planning and architectural integration program received November 6, 2018, showing elevations of the construction of a rear extension to an existing institutional building on lot 105 at 7015 Kildare and prepared by Reuben and Rotman Architects for the planning. Sorry, for the Planning Advisory Committee meeting and November 28, 2018, be approved according to the provisions of Chapter 14 of Bylaw 2217 of the City of Cote St. Luke. Moved by Councillor Burku, seconded by <coughs> Councillor <coughs> Torgman. And I again, yeah, this is approval of elevation showing the construction of a rear extension to the existing institutional building. Again, there's no need for any minor exemptions because the lot is quite big and uh, will allow for the extension in the back. There's no current use uh, on that land. It's not parking, it's just sort of vacant land. And they're extending the, uh, the, the mikveh in the back. And so uh, the PAC recommended that it be approved and we're voting on it tonight. Okay, moved and seconded, all in favor? No one opposed, carried unanimously for the mikveh. And now we move on to item 13, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Council takes the following stance in view of any agglomeration Council meetings to be held in January 2019 as follows, to authorize the Mayor or his duly authorized replacement to make any decisions he deems necessary and in the best interest of the City of Cote St. Luke and its residents regarding the items on the agenda of the agglomeration Council meetings to be held in January 2019 based on the information to be presented during those meetings. Seconded by Councillor a bag. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? All in favor? Yeah. Carried unanimously. And now we move on to other business, which is item 14B, Councillor Cohen. 14A. 14A, mm -hmm. Councillor Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, whereas, I want to do the whereas for this sure. one, if you don't mind. 
Whereas the 30,000 plus participants of New York's TD Borough Cycle are invited to raise funds for charities and this year and previous ones raised $1 million, whereas participants of multitude of mass participation running, cycling, triathlon and other mass participation self-propelled athletic events around the world have optionable charitable fundraising components, whereas the participants of running events alone in the U.S. raise over $1 billion per year for charities, whereas the participants of the Marathon de Montréal are invited to raise funds and may still be paying Montreal so that they may stage their event, whereas charities staging athletic events that raise funds at Parc Jean Drapeau actually pay for the privilege, whereas the Tour de Lille de Montréal receives $500,000 in funding and in-kind support from the agglomeration, whereas the Tour de Lille de Montréal is a major inconvenience to pedestrians and motorists, whereas emergency vehicles are delayed due to the event, whereas there is no noticeable increase in tourism due to the event, whereas Dorval, Kirkland and Hampstead will not consider allowing Latour in unless the participants are invited to raise funds for charities, whereas Cote St. Luc, DDO and Laval have banned the event altogether, whereas a significant number of the participants come from Laval, the South Shore, uh, et cetera, whose cities uh, contribute no funds and suffer no inconvenience, I so move that the Cote St. Luke City Council call upon the agglomeration not to support Velo Quebec with funding and free and kind support until such time as all of the participants of Velo Quebec events on the island of Montreal are invited by to raise funds for charities via their participation in the events. Okay. Moved by Councillor Cohen, seconded by. Who wants to second it? Me? Yeah. Well. Councillor Kovac, any discussion? It's Montreal's closest to your right. Councillor yeah. Cohen, any discussion? Most they're most affected by this. Yeah, it's like literally they're going through your streets. Okay, so it was moved and second. Any discussion or it just reads for itself? Uh, well, I, I just want to a little, add a little bit. Uh, Murray Levine is here. Uh, Murray, a former Coach Luke resident, and uh, we go back well more than 30 years when I was writing uh, my local community column in one of the papers. And uh, I remember first writing about this, and the Tour de Lille has irritated me from day one. Um, I, I, I don't look forward to that Sunday when it takes place. Uh, if I do have to go out, I get, um, I get stuck, I get marooned, uh, I get stuck in traffic, I can't care where I have to go to. I know people who've had uh, personal medical emergencies, they haven't been able to get to the hospital. Um, the event, I'm not a fan of the event, and I've made it very clear on my blogs and, and uh, in interviews with the media, uh, we don't want the tour passing through our streets, and um, I think it's kind of un unacceptable, and Murray's been leading the search for a long time. He's got a lot of prominent people on board uh, that they won't allow people to raise money for charity. If they raise money for charity, I still don't think I'd let them, I'd want them to come to Cote St. Luke, but I would perhaps be a little bit more tolerant. Uh, but Velo Quebec just has free reign to do whatever it wants, and I think uh, Murray asked if we could take a stand, and I personally agree with him to join the other municipalities, and I hope we could send a message to them. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Oh, oh Councillor Burke wants yeah, to say something. So I'm going to vote against this motion because uh, I just don't see any advantage to it. Sorry, Murray. I know. Um, I think it's, I, I can tell you that my own husband and son have done the Tour de Lille and enjoyed it very much. And I don't recall Cote Saint Luc banning it, so I don't even, I don't recall us ever banning it. I, I don't well, recall. Maybe that's not the word to use. Okay. Allow them to so I, I just, I, I don't support this resolution in the way that it's formulated. And I just don't think that it's, it's, it's contributing anything to the to, to the event, which is a, a very prominent Montreal Island event. And yeah, it's caused a little inconvenience here and there, but uh, a lot of people enjoy it. So I'm going to be voting against the resolution. Thank you. That's uh, a Mr. Mayor, this um, event was, I won't use the word banned, but we did not allow them access into the city because it created a lot of havoc for our residents. Uh, the irritation will not go away, however, $500,000 of agglomeration money, half a million dollars in kind funds, also comes from our taxpayers. So if we're going to participate at that level, then they should be allowed to fundraise and, and do some good with the event. As Mike says, maybe it'll be a little more palatable. 
uh, before I call for the vote, I'm just going to say that uh, I'm not against uh, Velo Quebec's uh, Tour de Lille event, uh, per se. I know a lot of people enjoy the event. I just uh, do agree with the resolution with respect to if you're going to be spending a half a million dollars to fundraise for, for have this type of event, that then they should allow for fundraising. So that is the aspect of the resolution that I am supporting, is that the right to fundraise should be allowed um, during this very massive event. They're using our taxpayers' money to fund it at the Aglo. They should allow for fundraising efforts. They can raise a lot of money for very worthy causes. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? We have one opposed. We have one shaking his head. Are you in favor or not, Councillor Kajaski? Can I abstain? No. No. You have to vote Can in I favor opposed? or against. You're no. opposed. So uh, uh, passed with Councillor Kajaski and Councillor Burku dissenting. Um, now we move on to item number Fourth B. B, Councillor Torgman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll read the whereas's for this one, if you don't mind. Whereas Airbnb is widely used accommodation service with significant influence worldwide, whereas Airbnb's decision to remove all listings in the Jewish settlements and capital in Israel um, contributes to the broader anti-Israel and anti-peace efforts of the boycott, divestment, sanctions, the BDS campaign. Whereas Airbnb's boycott singles out Jews as the only inhabitants of several disputed territories in the world to be banned from its services. Whereas the BDS campaign has a harmful local and international track record of anti-Semitic discourse and actions, including the denial of the Jewish people's right to self-determination in its historic land that runs counter to the values held by the residents of Cote St. Luke. Be it resolved that the city, that the Cote St. Luke City Council hereby opposes Airbnb's discriminatory decision to remove all listings in the Jewish capital and settlements in the West Bank, that the council hereby calls upon Airbnb to correct its decision and restore its original services immediately, that in the event that Airbnb does not stop, we call upon all of our residents and civilized people across the globe to boycott Airbnb until such time as they desist from this despicable anti-Semitic actions. Uh, moved by Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? Yes. Councillor Torgman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is something I feel very strongly about. I think it, their actions uh, to uh, discriminate specifically against uh, Jews is an action that, that has to be deplored. Um, there are multiple uh, services available for uh, it, it's similar services. Uh, it's called, there's HomeAway, there's VRBO, uh, vacationrentals.com, uh, home holidays, um, a, a plethora of other services that can be used. Um, and uh, I've already canceled uh, my Airbnb account, as has my wife and many friends. Councillor, Councillor Sabag. I just wanted to say that um, I'm very happy to see that Cote St. Luke is taking a stand on this. Multiple cities have already done this, and I want to personally thank uh, uh, Councillor Torgman for bringing it up. I think uh, it, it's clear that this is a, a, uh, an anti-Semitic motion uh, from RBNB and, and, and should not be tolerated by any cities. 100%. Anyone else to discuss? Yeah, and I strongly support this resolution and feel that individuals not only from Cote St. Luke but around the world should take note of this anti-Semitic act and uh, boycott the use of Airbnb. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we moved on to item 15, our second question period. Any questions? Mr. Levine. Okay, I have to word this as a question. Um, the median and receded charitable contribution of a tax filer in Quebec is only 44% of ninth place poor New Brunswick. Quebec is the worst province, state, territory in Canada and the United States for charitable giving. The reason why I've asked for this motion is not because I have anything against Velo Quebec. It's not that I have anything against cycling. I'm a cyclist. I've actually cycled 240 miles in one event. Um, but I want to thank you all for voting for, against, whatever, because you have taken a major step, and I'm confident that other cities will follow your example, your fine example. Uh, so since I have to ask a question, does anybody know 
the difference between what Federation Combined Jewish Appeal and Sontrade raised last year? It's not, it's not pertinent to Kosei, the question. Okay, I'll answer the question. Yeah, you can answer it. Sontrade raised only $1 million more than Federation Combined Jewish Appeal. There's 4 point whatever, 2 million people in Montreal. There's only 90,000 Jews. So we have one end and the other end. Anyways, I'd like to make it more balanced. Thank you for giving me the tools to do it. It's Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Thanks. Any other questions? Call for German. Seconded by Council of Israel. All in favor of adjournment? We are adjourned. Thank you.